the Financial Sense Lifetime Planning Program. Now, here's the Financial Sense News Team. People are quitting their jobs at the highest rates in years in what is being dubbed the Great Resignation. And according to some recent data, 55% of Americans are actually looking for a new job. What is driving the Great Resignation? And what are some of the scenarios that we might see going forward, especially as uh, we see a wave of corporate vaccine requirements also affecting employees? Joining us on the show today to discuss this is Joel Patterson. He's a workplace and business expert at the Vested Group. And Joel, so Bankrate just conducted the survey in August, and the numbers are pretty astonishing. Lots of Americans planning on leaving or looking for a new job over the next six months. It seems that one of the biggest things driving this currently, and I would say over the past year, is that now since people got a taste of working from home, a large number of people don't want to give that up. Is that your take on this data as well? Yeah, that's absolutely a, a, probably the biggest component of it. There are a lot of other things really playing into that these days, but but no no doubt about it. it you know, a year and a half ago, when we started down this path and working from from home was still you know a, a, a sort of a pie in the sky thing. Everybody did it, at least in a lot of industries, but certainly not to the extent they do these days. And then, you know, the, the change happened. There was some, you know, kind of everybody ha- struggles to get through change, but the technology held up. Production has 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 remained high. Um, you know, it looks like it's it's working well for a lot of people. Uh, and and it's not even just the surveys that are saying that people are wanting to do that. The the the, the history is telling us that already too. In the last three months, eleven and a half million people quit their job. So it, those things combined, uh, it's a, it's it's really a unique and interesting job market, and it's really challenging for employers these days. Job openings are up strongly, and there's a lot to talk about a labor shortage where employers are having a difficulty in filling those open positions. At the same time, flexibility and the ability to work from home is a big factor driving people to look for these new jobs, as you mentioned, and uh, you know, as the data is showing. So it sounds like if you're an employer and you want to fill those spots, if you're in an industry where that can work, then perhaps what you want to be doing is putting that right at the top of the list as the selling point to get new employees in the door. Yeah, it's 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 a selling point and it's quickly becoming a must have. You've got to be able to provide the flexibility. Now, clearly this is only for industries that can support that. And, and there are a lot of those these days. So it's not gonna work for everyone, but for those that, that work in those industries, going in, understanding what your expectations are, how much do you wanna work from home? I mean, do you wanna do that all the time? Or, cause I feel like a lot of, in a lot of ways, we had this big shift where everybody wanted to work from home 100% of the time. And we've really, in most cases, pulled back from that. There's always gonna be people that, that would prefer to be uh, home all the time, and that's just their nature. But most people want some sort of hybrid is what we're kind of falling into. And 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 employers have to be able to provide that. They've got to be able to provide clear direction on how they're handling the pandemic. Uh, one thing that is different these days when it comes to employers is they, they have to be uh, able to be, they're held accountable, I should say, to how they treated their employees during COVID. You know, were people let go? Uh, you know, were, were there changes made to the business to support it continuing? There's just a lot of things that happen that they'll really want to dig into. Um, and then you look at things like vaccinations and mask mandates and um, and then just the, the general squeeze of the labor market right now. There is a lot of, uh, of jobs available and not, as many people as you would expect that are really looking to dive back in. Yeah, isn't that the truth? And as we just discussed, people are quitting their jobs at record rates. If you look at the data that's collected by the BLS, the quit rate, it's at the highest rate that we've seen on record as far as the data has been collected going uh, 20 years. So people are quitting their jobs at re- in record numbers and flexibility is a, a key part of this. And now we have a wave of corporate mandates where particularly large corporations, I think are most of them now less so small and medium sized businesses, but a lot of these large financial companies, Disney, airline companies, a lot of these larger firms are saying, you got to get vaccinated or you're going to have to look elsewhere. So that's going to be weighing in on this. If if people are quitting their jobs already, I imagine that's only going to bump them even further out the door. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, uh, we're, we're getting to that point where the people that want to get vaccinated are going to, and the ones that don't, 
aren't going to. And, and, you know, business can do a lot of things in the world and a lot of good. I really believe that we spend most of our time in business, but there are things that you just can't, you can't, you can't get in the middle of. And, and like you said, a lot of these large organizations who I think are really focused mainly on public perception when they make some of these decisions, as far as, you know, how they're going to manage it, uh, small to medium businesses, nobody feels comfortable. I shouldn't say nobody. Most people don't feel comfortable telling someone else what they need to put into their body. That said, we're like everyone else. We're highly encouraging everyone get vaccinated. Uh, we have to go out to clients and we want to make sure that we're doing the right things. Uh, you know, to me, it's a pretty clear decision. Uh, I, I, I understand there's a, a different perspective on the other side, and I fully respect their right to have that uh, to make that decision. But when it comes to business, it's a it's a dicey one. And it's not one that we've really had to dig into before. If you want to talk about your pay or your growth opportunities, I'm all in on that. But but as far as what you put in your body when it comes to, to, to medicine is, is just kind of it's 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 something I don't really want to have to, to, to take into account when I'm making business decisions. Yeah, definitely. And, and it seems like the, the larger firms, they're going to be a little bit more likely just to say vaccination, a vaccine is required in order for you to come into work. Some of the smaller and medium sized businesses, it sounds like they may have a little bit more flexibility or, or perhaps try to explore other options, whether or not that's, uh, you know, maybe we'll have some type of hybrid work, work environment. You know, for example, at, at our company, we're at about 15, 20 different people. So we're staggering uh, who comes in which days just to try to lower the amount of exposure that's taking place. We're trying to do everything by the book, of course. Um, but we're exploring a lot of different options and trying to make sure everything works out as best as it can for everyone before, you know, just putting the gauntlet down and saying, ah, you got to get vaccinated or you're fired, which yeah, ho hopefully that's not the first thing that people would would do. Yeah, and that and you hit on it right there is is if you can get your people to believe what you just communicated that you are your your primary concern is their health and safety, then you're going to do everything you can to keep them employed. To you know, when I think businesses aren't necessarily they've they've already responded to the actual economic impact by now. But you know, a year ago it was, hey, what can you do to keep these people employed? And now it's you know, how do you keep them them, them healthy and and make sure that you're doing everything that you can to keep them productive and focused and have purpose. Is all of these things. Whatever that work from home strategy is, whatever that vaccine strategy is, you've got to go back to the basics with your people and make sure that you're providing purpose so that they can stay engaged. Um, you know, you, you're, you're promoting a culture that, that really demonstrates trust. Uh, trust, I think, is something that's missing from a lot of organizations these days and that people don't feel comfortable going in with ideas because they're afraid they're going to get picked on for it or, you know, being being capable of vulnerability is a big deal in organizations. And uh, there's a lot of crazy things going on these days. I'll tell you one thing that just popped up a couple of days ago that I find fascinating is, is when you, um, when you hear somebody say, oh, I work two jobs, the first thing that you hear, you, you think is, is something your grandparents would tell you about working two jobs and walking uphill both ways and for, for both of them. Right. And, and that's, that's the dynamic. Well, there's a whole, there's a new subset. I don't know how big this subset is of people out there that are doing everything that they can to work two full-time jobs while doing as minimal work as possible. And there's even websites out there that are, that, that are, uh, that really give you guidance on how to do that. Cause there's things that are really difficult that you might imagine. Like, how do you, uh, how do you make sure that you keep your LinkedIn profile uh, accurate or how do you attend two meetings at the same time? I mean, things like this. So, so all the, all the chaos in the, in the labor market is creating these these offshoots of, of situations that you would never have expected. Never would I think it would even be possible to work 16 hour jobs, two of them in, in less than a day's worth of work. It's, uh, it's hard to imagine. Right. Yeah. You made a good point. Uh, a lot of people, when they think of uh, two full-time jobs, they think uh, eight hours at one job and then you go do another shift at eight hours, another job at a second job. But th that's not the scenario we're talking about. We're talking about people working two full-time jobs, in many cases from home, right? Simultaneously. So they're they're blending it all together. You know, they're working here, doing this consulting on the side, maybe, and then they're going back to their main position or vice versa. Or maybe they're even playing video games nowadays for money, 
uh, which is a growing trend as well. So <laughs> nice, man. That was I'm, I'm 48 years old, and that was that was the dream when I was a kid. <laughs> if you had yeah. the opportunity to play video games. Oh yeah, not many people would pass that up. So, you know, let's talk about productivity and burnout trends in light of remote working. What are you seeing from your perch? Absolutely, see a certain level of burnout taking place, and, and it's not. Some of it is is you read a lot about people just loafing. Right. And they're doing nothing. And then you get also the flip side of that is I think a lot of the, the population has really dug in and doing what they can. And they're doing their part and trying to 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 manage through the change of working from home. Um, but but then all of a sudden, you know, there's a, a, a new report and then the mask mandates are back. And it's really I think people are, are, are getting are feeling change fatigue and that's creating burnout in a lot of people at work. Um, I do feel like productivity has remained high for most people that I speak to. Um, that's that hasn't been the issue. But we're also uh, very early in this. And, and the, the concern all along has been how do your, you know, the, the creative side of your business and, and the interactions that only take place when you're in a room together, how do you replace that from a long-term growth and relationship perspective in your organization? And, and I think some of that burnout we're seeing is a lack of people being able to, to spend time together. Even, you know, I'm in Texas and we're, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, pretty aggressive with how we, we manage through the, the vaccines and masks and um and i can tell you that that everyone that wants to come into the office is able to come into or allowed to come into the office but we're usually at 30 to 40 percent tops and a lot of days we're at 10 percent. and it's it's just it's um it's the fact that, that they know that, that it's okay if they don't feel comfortable coming in and working from home but i think that's also just kind of the general sense of where people are right now and that uh you know i don't want to i don't want to start a new routine and then have to change it again in two weeks until we get a little bit of consistency then then maybe i'll uh I'll, I'll, I'll change. But until then, uh, productivity at home actually, I think, has been quite good. And, and I personally have been surprised by how good it's been. So I, I don't see it slowing down. Yeah, yeah, that's been one of the most fascinating things for me is just looking at the trends in productivity. It seems that generally working from home has been good for productivity levels. Uh, people have managed to utilize a lot of the technologies that are available to us today. Of course, we know Zoom. You and I are uh, speaking through Zoom right now. This is what we use to record all of our interviews for our podcast when we've been doing so for many years through Zoom. But, you know, Zoom, whether or not it's uh, Microsoft Teams to connect to your other employees, um, or what have you. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things in place now that make remote working possible and a lot easier than it would have been in the past. So, it, you know, it sounds like if we were to kind of sum up what we've discussed so far, you know, people are quitting their jobs again at record rates. Uh, as long as we've seen the, the data being collected, um, it's at the highest levels ever. And very likely, given the fact that we're seeing now um, a wave of corporate mandates, particularly by these larger firm, firms, and still quite a bit of uncertainty over Delta. Of course, there's even other variants that, that we can read headlines coming out of South Africa that are more transmissible than Delta, that this level of uncertainty, um, and like you said, you know, a lot of employees and employers having uh, uncertainty or change fatigued, that we're probably not looking at an end of the high quit rates at this point because it's just there's there's so much change there's so much things that are in flux still especially if com companies are going to be demanding more uh, uh demanding vaccine requirements so perhaps we're not seeing the end of that trend in, in people quitting their jobs in record numbers yet uh, yeah I, I think you're you're spot on um i think we're just seeing the beginning of it really and there'll be a there's going to be, you know, an overreach and then probably a little bit of a pullback and then we'll settle somewhere in the middle. And I think that's going to play out this way, too. The other thing is, is that doesn't really get taken into account is there's there's a whole group of people that were planning to leave their job before COVID. And I think a lot of that stuff, um, you know, they just decide, OK, well, I'll wait until this is done. And I, and I, I wonder how many of the people in, in the 11 million that quit in the last few months were planning to before the pandemic, uh, because because I I got to believe that those people were even more encouraged to to quit because they had time to think about it a little bit more, um, as well as the people that decided, hey, you know what? I all of a sudden I realized there's a lot of options out there, and during the pandemic I had time to think about what else I might want to do, 
Uh, so that stuff's going to continue as people become more and more courageous about making a, a change in their career. You know, Joel, one question I want to ask you about is, of course, a big topic right now is inflation. That's uh, been something we've been discussing for quite some time on our podcast, just uh, looking at the trend of rising inflation. Everyone's feeling the pinch right now. I live here in California. We've seen a big increase in food, electricity, and gas prices. This is true for most parts of the U.S. as well. Many employees are looking at their their bills, you know, looking at it relative to their wage if they haven't gotten a a raise in a while and they're thinking, hey, I'm getting behind. Any tips or thoughts on employees looking for a raise? Yeah, it's it's pretty simple. Um, I think that these days, the most important thing is you go in with some data. Don't walk in and and assume that because of your relationship with that person, no matter how tight it is, that they're just going to go to bat for you. You got to make sure that you let them know what you've done. Don't be afraid to lobby for yourself. Uh, walk in there with some data and let them know, hey, I contributed in this area of the business. I helped out on this project or I led this initiative. Uh, that's the most important thing. But then the other piece is, is, is the relationships. Make sure that you, when you when you walk in, that's not the first time you're talking to that person, that you've spent time investing in that relationship and responding to their feedback. Uh, I, I, I absolutely encourage people, if they feel like they have, uh, put in the work and they deserve a raise that they should reach out. Even right now, um, you just have to make sure that you're giving them enough information to go to bat for you. Uh, and, and these days, there's a lot of companies out there that are that are hiring and, and, and kind of overpaying. They're seeing a lot of overpaying in certain industries just to, to buy some market share and to have some capacity as, as uh, things continue to open up overall in, in the economy. But, um, you know, the most important thing you can learn or one of the most important things you can learn in your career is is to um, to go to bat for yourself and self-advocacy. So this is a great place to do that. And, and, and uh, don't be shy. Just make sure you've got good data. We've been speaking with Joel Patterson, workplace and business expert at the Vested Group. Joel, how can our listeners get in contact with you or find more about your company? Yeah, sure. So we're a technology services firm that happens to be focused primarily on their culture. Um, but we love to talk to, to businesses that are growing uh, and are looking to scale. And we work with an Oracle product called NetSuite to help them do that. Uh, and thevested.com or joelpatterson.com. Perfect. All right, Joel, it was a pleasure to speak with you on our show. Definitely look forward to having you on again. 